Okay, hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to cover uh, the basics of using um, simple arrays in C++. So, um, in particular, you know, just, just, we're just going to go over uh, how you declare arrays and how you access them. So, the basics of, of getting elements in and out of arrays. Look at, at, at how you process arrays, so using loops or iteration to initialize them, print their values, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we're going to look at using arrays, passing arrays as parameters in the function. So you need this for the first program assignment for my class that these videos are for. Um, and finally, I, I, I mentioned a quick thing or two about using arrays of, of characters. So the, the old style way that um, string processing was done in C++. Okay. So um, as usual, I have a... Um, uh, file of examples uh, for everything I'm going to talk about here. I'll post it with the video. Um, so let's get started here. We'll go back down to main. So, um, so declaring arrays. Uh, I mean, well, before I begin, real quickly. I mean, if you could only, if, if a programming language only allowed you to declare variables that could hold one single value. Uh, you would quickly, I mean, you can't build anything very complex with that. So if you wanted to write a program to, to calculate the average of 10 values, you'd have to declare 10 variables, you know, my variable 1, my variable 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth, right? So, uh, I mean, all um, programming languages support something like an array or a list because it's impractical just to have variables that only hold one thing, okay? So an array... It's just a collection of a fixed number of components, all of the same data type. So that's important. So arrays in C are homogenous. Everything in the array is of the same type. So that's different than other high-level languages that have lists where you can have items in the list of different types. So, have, so um, this is the basic way that you um, declare an array. I've got three examples here. So you can declare an array of any type. So, you know, so th this first one is an array of doubles. Um, uh, of 10 doubles. Um, I'm going to be using this constant uh, below here. So I encourage you not, not to use magic numbers like I did for my other two arrays here. So. Um, the second array is just an array of integers. So, you know, uh, we've got an array of, of five integers. And the third one is, is an array of the day of the week enumerated type. We used this in a previous video. So just to remind you, this is a, an example of a user-defined uh, enumerated uh, a data type, so this just uh, holds the day of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay, so, um, and later on we'll see that you can have arrays of other user-defined types, so when we, next week, when we, or uh, next video when we talk about structures and classes, if you create uh, a structure of like employees, you can create an array of your employees for um, uh, an application for uh, your work, you know, or an array of students, for an application for managing students in class, that kind of thing. Um, so um, the first thing to know um, is, is how do we uh, access the elements in the array? So I'll use my integers first. So in C++ and C, um, arrays are what are known as zero indexed. Okay, so the first item in the array is indexed at, 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 at index zero. Um, and then the last item in the array, is the, so if I have an array like my integers of size 5, the valid indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there's five items in the array, but the index only goes up to the size minus 1, okay? So the first item is at index 0, and the last item is at index 5 minus 1. So if I want to put an item at the first element uh, in my integers, I just um, I use these square braces. Um, um, so index, my integers index zero, and I assign it a value. This is, this is how you write a value into your array, okay? And if I want to access the last item in the array, I have to know how big the array is to access the last item. So if the array is of size five, the last item is going to be at index four. And here I assign 33 into the index four. Um, as I showed here, I mean, you know, arrays can be of, of any type, including user-defined types. So the my days of the week array is an array of size 42, so I can assign um, uh, a day of the week to any value in my days of the week, okay? Um, so let me skip over this. I'll come back to this. Um, 
So let me just show then um, uh, if, if you want to out if you want to read the values back out of the array, then you can use pretty much the same syntax. Okay, sticking with my integers. If I want to access the first value from my integers, uh, again I, I just use my integer zero, um, and and that will read it back out. And in this case, it'll read it uh, for output to the C out stream, to the standard output stream. Um, so let me let me build here real quick and run so we can show the output of this, where we're accessing the, the first item and the last item again for the array uh, here. Um, oh, nothing changed. And so let me go ahead and run that uh, in, the, in the debug. So we should see here, if we look up to the very beginning, that, that we're getting the first value is in D22 and the last value is 33 as we um, as we did in fact initialize the first value to 22 and the last value to 33. Okay. So, um, and then if we look at here, we're accessing the other array. I've also got the function that converted the uh, the enumerated type into a string. So if we access uh, uh, the 33rd value, the, the value at index 33 in the my days of the week array, uh, we should see that is is in fact Monday. Okay. Um, okay. So one thing our textbook talks about it, uh, but, but make certain that you're very careful about accessing arrays beyond the end of the array. Okay. So this is the most common reason why you'll get um, um, uh, access violations or bounds errors, or just get segmentation faults occurring in your uh, programs if, in your C or C++ programs. So here's an example. Um, so the, the, the big problem is that if you access just a little bit beyond the array, usually the program won't crash. Okay, so the, so I expect my program won't crash in this case. So notice my integers again is only of size five, five so that means that the valid indexes are from zero up to four. Uh, so if I if I assign a value uh, 42 into index five. That's not really a valid location from my array. That's beyond the end of the bounds of my array. Okay, but you'll see. And, and if we access um, the, the value at index five, um, you'll see that that things seem to work. Probably, I haven't tried this yet. Um, so let's compile that. Stop the debugger. Set a breakpoint here, so it stops right there, um, and run it. So you see, this we, we stopped right after the end of this, and and, and it looks like it worked fine, okay. Uh, but in actuality, it didn't work fine. We're actually writing 42 not into my integers, but into whatever is in memory at the location after my integers, okay. So. Uh, so here, uh, this is actually the worst case that can happen. My program doesn't crash, but I've written a random value into somewhere that I'm not expecting. So it's gonna it could possibly cause my program to not work correctly. And, and these kinds of bugs can be very hard to track down. Okay. Uh, so actually, the best case scenario is if you do something like this. Uh, so if I if I write too far beyond the ends of my array, most likely what will happen. Um, is you're going to be trying to write into memory that's not owned by your um, by your program. Try, trying to write into memory owned by the operating system or by another process that's running. So in that case, the program will actually crash, and, and the message you'll get could be different, uh, but it's normally something like a, a bounds violation or what's known as a segmentation violation. So so let's try that. So let's uh, let's stop the debugger, rebuild. Um, and um, run. And we're done building here. So you see, it, it does succeed. So the compiler can't detect when you're doing things like that, when you're going beyond the ends of the array. But uh, notice we, we had a crash here. Um, so if we look at that, um, on my Visual Studio, we get an unhandled exception, an access violation exception. So again, I mean, we're trying to access memory uh, that, that's not owned by us. Okay, so it's a very common problem, um, um, and uh, so, but usually it's not that you're doing something so obviously wrong. Uh, usually you're doing something that's going beyond the end of the array in the loop or something, and you're not realizing. It. 
So, so let me comment that back out again uh, and continue on. But in this class, we're going to you're going to need to be doing a lot of stuff with memory. So learning to deal with, with memory violations or access violations like that is, is, is you know, it's, it's necessary. You have to learn to do that in C in order to write good data structures. So. Um, all right. So let me, um, let me stop and rebuild that. Okay, so we, we showed how you can read values back out in order to uh, do output, um, but you can also use the same kind of syntax to directly do calculations with values in an array. So here I just access the first and last value, the first and, and, and the value index four of my integers again and sum them together. So we should expect to get 55 and, and the result is assigned back into my sum. So yeah, in fact, so we do get 55 for the sum there. Um, so a, another common problem for people in any programming language, but uh, especially in C and C++, uh, you know, it's undefined to access um, a variable <coughs> in uh, this hasn't been un, that hasn't been initialized yet. Okay, so you can do this with a regular variable, but you can, but it's especially easy to do with arrays if you don't initialize them. So here, I've never initialized the value at index one for my integers. So let's step over that um, statement here. So if, if we access the value one, we get, you know, it looks like there's a value there, but this is garbage. It's just whatever happened to be in memory at that location. Since I didn't overwrite that value, initialize it, uh, so we're getting kind of essentially a random value. So you shouldn't assume that C is going to initialize your arrays to zero or some meaningful value. Usually it'll just be left alone and there'll be like garbage or random values in there. So. Um, same thing, you know, for, uh, for other data types. So if I access an uninitialized value in my days of the week, the enumerated type, um, we'll see, well, it's unknown. So that's, you know, it wasn't a value zero to six, you know, so, uh, so it, it gets displayed as unknown there. Um, okay, so, so that, that was the basics of how you create an array and how you access the values to read and write uh, to a particular value in an array. So, but normally when we process arrays, we want to process all the values in the array. So normally in C or C++, we have to iterate over the values of the array. So, so the, the normal way um, is we're going to write um, loops. Um, and normally we, we do what are uh, known as indexed um, controlled loops, OK? So, so you'll see for all these examples, and, and these are pretty much directly from the textbook, we just use a for loop where we use a index variable. Um, and instead of using i, I like to use actually the, the full name again to make my code, code more readable. So you know that the intention of this variable is it's the index into the array. So we start off our index at 0, because arrays are 0, zero indexed um, in C++. And we go up, notice this is important, we go up to index being less than my doubles inside. My, my double size. So I'm going to I'm going to iterate over my doubles here, uh, where this was a defined constant. Uh, it's currently um, set to uh, ten, you know, so that my doubles has ten values in it. So when you write your loops like this, um, um, uh, the 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 values will be incremented zero, one, two, three, up to but not including ten. So it'll stop when index is 9. It'll execute this statement for when index is 9, but then when index gets incremented to 10, we'll be done with the loop, and we won't access the value 10, which is beyond the bounds of my array, okay? So let's set another breakpoint. So the, the effect of this is I'm going to initialize all the values uh, in my doubles to this uh, complex statement here, okay? And we're not going to print anything out, so let me just uh, continue to the next breakpoint past that point, okay? So here, after that, we've initialized all the values uh, in my doubles, the, the 10 values. We should be able to see the values here. Um, here, I'll, I'll, use the, I'll show some more of using the, the debugger. So um, 
we should be able to see my doubles uh, in locals here. So if you look at, at the local variables, uh, here's my doubles, and, and here's the values in my doubles. So the first value was 10 because um, uh, we took 15, but we took 0 minus 5, so negative 5 squared, that was 25, so 15 minus 25 um, gives 10, negative 10, and we take the absolute value, so we had 10, okay? And, and the rest of these for my 10 values and my doubles. So, um, so the, the next example here, um, um, we're going to output the values, so again, we're, we're accessing all the values to display them on, on, on the C out, standard output. So set, let's set, set my breakpoint there and, and continue past that. So then you should see all these same 10 values, 10, 1, 6, 11, and so on, uh, output here for, for my doubles, right? Um, and uh, this, uh, you need to do something like this. Um, Um, uh, in, in, your, in the first programming assignment I gave you. So, so uh, here, um, uh, something similar to this. So if I want to calculate the, 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 the sum, if I want to get the sum, so our textbook shows just summing, simply summing up the values in an array. Here I'm doing something slightly more complex. I'm going to sum up the squares of all the values in the array. So, so here we're going to create a temporary, temporary variable called the sum of squares. Uh, initially, we'll start it, set it at zero, but then every value inside of our loop, we, we square it and we run that to our, we, we add that to our running sum. And at the end, um, I'll display the, the total after we sum up, um, uh, sum up the squares of these values here. Okay. So that was our calculation. The the the, the sum of the squares of these ten values should be one thousand thirty-three if you check it by hand. Square each of these values and sum those up. You get 1,034. Um, and then one final example. So if you need to search in an array, again, typically you'll want to use a loop. So for example, a typical task you might need to do is find the maximum value in an array. So here, uh, this is one way you can do it. There's, there's multiple ways, but um, we can start off by assuming that the largest value in the, we've seen so far is the value at index 0, and then we're going to compare the largest value we've seen so far to the, the values in the index starting at 1. So notice, unlike before starting at 0, we start at 1 because we're going to compare uh, the value that, at the, that we've seen the maximum we've seen so far at max index, which is initially zero, to the value at the current index. Anytime we find a value that's that's bigger, we remember that instead as the largest one we've seen so far. Okay. So uh, you, if if you don't quite follow what I'm saying there, you should step through this um, and try it yourself. But um, um, if we look back through the array, the largest value is 15 at index five. So if we coded this correctly. Um, and uh, we continue past that point, we should see that the largest value in my doubles is at index 5 with a value of 15. All right? So um, let me go back to this, this, this um, a, a quick note about using this, uh, this uh, defined constant, this name constant called my double size. Uh, let me stop the debugger here. Um, So um, I show here um, we, we created a name constant for the for the, the size of the my doubles array. Okay, so if you didn't do this, if you use magic number ten all over the code, but if I decided then, uh, oh, um, my doubles needs to be of size twenty instead of size ten. Well, you would you would have had to have gone through your code, find all occurrences of tw of ten and change it to twenty, um, and that's very error prone for two reasons. Maybe maybe 20 is being used by other arrays for their size, so then you have to only change the, the, the values of the magic number for the my doubles. And the other, though, is you might not have found all of those. So if some places I didn't find it and I was still using 10 instead of 20, um, I would have bugs in my code, okay? So, so 
trading constants instead of using magic numbers like this is you, you should do this, or I'm going to take points off in your programming assignments. Uh, this serves two purposes. It, um, it, it, it reduces bugs in your code if you have to change the size, and it makes your code more readable. So now I explicitly see, like in all my loops, that I'm, I'm looping up to the, the, you know, the, my double size, whatever it currently is. So now that I've changed that, my double size to be 20, as you can see, um, if we rebuild and rerun, it should do all these, these things um, exactly correctly, but using um, an array of 20 doubles instead of an array of 10 doubles now. Uh, so let's run that down to that uh, point here. So notice that my doubles now has 20 values in it. Um, the sum of the squares is uh, is bigger now. Um, oh, and, and we, I stopped a little bit too soon. I meant to stop. Um, oh, let's continue on here. I missed a break point. Um, and um, when, when we find the maximum value, looking through all these, the maximum value occurred at index 19 with a value of 181. So. All right, so um, just... Uh, you know the, the the point of that is uh, the, the motto of that is you know don't use magic numbers use named constants uh, they might be global or they could be inside of the function uh, like like I just did there but but always use uh, named constants like that like my double size instead of magic numbers so. um, and then finally uh, for processing one quick note. Um, this is um, um, a relatively recent an, uh, addition to the C++ standard. Um, th there's a new way that you can iterate through the items in an array. So this is what's known as um, um, uh, as a range-based iteration. So we'll, we'll be using this when we talk about the standard template library and iterating over containers and that as well, okay? So the way you read this is uh, I want to iterate over all of the values in, the, in my doubles, so this array of my doubles, and then every time through this loop, so notice this is actually a reference variable, so a double is a reference variable, so the first time through the loop, uh, a double is going to be referencing or it's going to be pointing to basically the item at index zero in my double. And then the second time through the loop, it'll point to, to the item at index one, and so on. Okay. So um, I mean, if you need if you need the index number, then then it's probably simpler to use the the explicit indexed um, looping like we were doing. But but here, if you just need to do something with the value, like in this case, just accessing the value, uh, this is actually cleaner. And this is the way that high level languages uh, allow you to iterate over lists and things like that. So. This makes C++ much more like uh, Java or Python in terms of iterating over a container or a list. Um, so, so yeah, if we, if we continue on um, past that code and run it, you'll see um, it accesses the, the same 20 values now in my doubles and just displays them um, by, by doing this range-based uh, uh, iteration. So, and this is also not, you don't have to know the size of the list to do this. Um, um, it figures out the size for you and correctly only iterates over the value. So this, this is safer. You're less prone to go past the end of your array um, using this range-based iteration. So. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about, um, you know, kind of review is passing arrays to functions, okay? So in your first program assignment for this class, you have to do something like this. So real quickly, I wrote a couple of functions with some examples of this. So if you wanted to initialize an array of doubles, um, uh, we might write a function to do that, okay? So, um, um, and I encourage you, if, when you write functions like this, where you're passing an array in, uh, do it like this. Always pass in the array and always pass in as a parameter the, the size of the array, the, the number of values in the array. So let's, let's look at the initialize array of doubles um, function here up at the top. So, um, get 
the whole thing in here. So there it is. Um, so this function um, takes um, um, X takes three parameters, although the third parameter is a default parameter. Didn't talk about those last time when we talked about functions, but here's an example of using a default parameter. So we, we pass in a simple integer, which is the number of items in the array that you want to initialize. And then we pass in the array um, as, as the second part. So this specifies that I'm passing in not a simple double, but an array of doubles. Okay, so a, a collection of doubles. So notice you don't have to specify the, num the size of the array. Um, and then we use this third, per, thir this third parameter, the, the default. So the default behavior of this initialized array of doubles is to initialize all the values to zero. But if you want to, you can, you can pass in a third parameter to have it initialize it to something else, okay? So let's go back down here. Um, so let's step over that. So, so the result of that, so remember that, that my doubles had non-zero values in there. So if we call it uh, with only two parameters, it should initialize all the values in my doubles to zero now. Um, and then um, here's another function to display the values in, um, uh, in an array. So another function that takes an array as input. Let's go back up and look at that one real quickly. So right after initialize, there's display. It's pretty similar. But um, instead of, of, of initializing the values, we display the values on standard output. Okay? So there's no third parameter this time, but mostly the same as the previous function. Uh, although one other thing to note here, so in this case, this function doesn't actually modify the values of the array. Okay, So um, if you write a function that takes an array as input and it doesn't modify the values, you should um, um, declare that, that the array is constant. So that means that um, uh, whatever the values are when we come into the array, they'll be the same when we return. We won't change those values. We'll only read the values out and do something with them. Okay? So, um, and, and that reminds me, I forgot to mention, you know, so by, by uh, default in C, C++, when you pass an array to a function, the, the values are passed by reference instead of being passed by value. That's because uh, if you had an array like, like of a thousand or a million values, if you passed it by reference, you'd have to copy all those million values first to, 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 pass, it by, to, to pass it by value, okay? So that, that would be too expensive. So by, by default, the, um, uh, the, the way values are passed um, is by reference when you pass an array to a function. So that you don't do that, kind of, you, you're, just, you're just passing the, 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 base of, the, the base address of the array to the function, okay? And that means, though, that if you modify the array that's passed in as a parameter of a function, it, it actually changes the array in the caller, uh, the, the, the values in the array in the caller when you return from the function. So that's why this initialize array works. And so if we, if we step over here, um, we initialize my doubles to all zeros. So if we look at the result um, from displaying our array, so we see, in fact, indeed, all 20 values are now zero in my doubles array, right? Um, so another reason why you should always use this way of, of passing in arrays, but passing in both the size of the array as well as the array is it makes the, the function self-contained and it makes them more flexible. So if I wanted to only initialize the first five values of my doubles to a different value, 42.42, I could call initialize array of doubles again and then display it. Um, and there you go. So the, only the first five values, the values in index 0 to 4, were initialized to 42.42 by calling it like this. Um, 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 giving the size is 5 and, and giving our initializer the value that we want to initialize to 42.42. So. Um, okay. So um, there's some other things uh, in the Malik textbook I'm not going to talk about today, but you should definitely, of course, read over those. So we, we might use um, two-dimensional arrays in this class. Uh, if we do, I'll go back and talk a little bit about those. Um, you ought to understand what are meant by parallel arrays in this class. 
Um, uh, but one other thing, I just want to mention then real quickly as a final thing, um, um, the, the use of character arrays, so arrays of characters uh, in C and C++, okay? So it used to be that there was no string data type before objects and classes were inter introduced to the C++ language. So if you wanted to do uh, processing of strings, or, or you know, po processing of textual data, you had to use that, you had to do that by declaring arrays of characters and processing the arrays of characters. But, you know, the, so these are uh, various, these are known by various names, but I, I will probably always refer to these as as old style, old C style character arrays or old C style um, string processing, uh, if, if we do things like this. Uh, you shouldn't, I mean, if you have a choice, you should use the new string data type, you know, so you shouldn't, uh, because it's much more powerful than old C style character arrays. But, but you'll see code that still uses these. So these are just regular characters, uh, arrays of characters, you know, like arrays of integers or arrays of doubles, uh, like we were just using. Um, so if I wanted to, you know, I can initialize the, if I, if I need to initialize my character array to hold the, the values D, E, R, E, K, I could do that, but that would be, this would be kind of tedious. So, um, initialize the first character to be D, initialize the second character to be E, and so on. Uh, so I didn't show this before, but I could use the, um, the statement decora declaration initializer for arrays, initialize all the, the values that I wanted to. So this actually only initializes the first um, six values of, of my character array to hold the characters D, E, R, E, K, and the null terminator, okay? So, The, the, the way that, that string processing was done, was done um, in using for, for old style C arrays, uh, instead of passing the size to the functions of your, your C array, uh, we would always put this null character at the end. So in that way, we don't have to pass in that I have uh, five characters in my array. We can just, uh, like if I wanted to call the, the function that would change this all to uppercase, or call the function that would count the length of this string. I could just pass in uh, my name, this array, and it would just count these up or uppercase all these until it found the null character. So, so that's, that's the way all of the functions in the, um, the, the, the C string library. So if you want to use the old C string function, you have to include C string like that. Uh, and that has things like, um, like length and um, um, uh, uppercase and lowercase and things like that. So uh, I don't know why it's complaining, but um, uh, 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 it's, I'm not going to show that. So you can look at the tech book if you do that. So um, so then real quickly though. So the other thing though um, is. Um, you can't do this with, with regular arrays, but uh, another way you can initialize a, a, an old style C string is like this, using the, the double quoted string constant. So this will put the null character in there for you, even though you don't see it. So it'll put a null character on the end. Uh, you can send old style C strings like this to uh, C out. It knows how to handle them. So. Um, So if, if we look at that, step over that, you, you'll see that, hello, my name is Derek Harder. So, um, but uh, again, these are much less powerful than, than the new string class. So you can't do things like, um, uh, for example, concatenate strings together. You have to use the, uh, what's it, the string cat function to concatenate one string onto the end of, of another string and that kind of thing. Okay, so uh, before I, I've gone already longer than I wanted to. So just uh, to, to summarize, so in this video, we looked at real quickly the basics of declaring uh, and processing simple one-dimensional arrays in C and C++. We looked at a couple of examples of passing arrays as functions to parameters. You ought to be comfortable doing this. We're going to be using that um, ability um, uh, uh, a bit uh, in this class for various things. And then we looked at old-style C character arrays for doing string processing. 
Um, okay, so that's the end of this video. I uh, hope that was useful, and I will see you in the next video.